Interfacing PLCs with other devices such as servo motors, vision inspection cameras, barcode readers, or HMIs is like the ultimate milestone in controls engineering. It is like Dragon Ball fusion between Gaku and Vegeta. This is my latest hobby project. It's part detection with indirect indexing using Alan Bradley's RS Logics 500, a Cognex checker, vision sensor, and a stepper motor axis that can be home. So, let me show well, you. This is the actual setup. This here is a stepper motor axis with a home switch that was taken out of a desk jet printer and the motor is controlled by this stepper motor controller which is also homemade using CMOS chips a 12 volt power supply for the stepper motor controller and a Rockwell's Alan Bradley's uh, Micrologix uh, 1500 PLC and a 5 volt power supply from a Nokia phone and of course a Cognes uh, vision checker and the purpose of this setup is that the camera will travel along the axis and will scan along its travel this white piece of paper looking for in a specific symbol in this case is this arrow kind of uh, symbol and it will supposedly ignore the other non arrow figures so that is uh, the purpose of this setup and this here is the software from Cognix to set up the camera so this here is the part detection window that is placed near where the part is suspected to be so this is turned about 90 degrees this way so the parts are going to be moving along this axis, which is in this case this axis, because the camera is mounted uh, horizontally this way. So it's flipped around 90 degrees. And uh, there is a width to sense how wide the part is. And the outputs, the screen outputs, is set to part detected and part OK. So the output cable, that was also the power cable for the camera, takes 24 volts from the PLC and it will then switch on and off the outputs. I set the cockiness to be uh, triggering uh, constantly, so it, there is no trigger signal, it just cyclically uh, triggers snapshots. And evaluates along its journey uh, like kind of a scanner it will scan along this direction trying to detect the right symbol on the white piece of paper so once you get that set up the vision is actually so I'm gonna be scrolling this see if the camera catches that you can see with the LEDs on the back of the camera it should uh, signal you that there is there and the image will be refreshed here as you can see is detecting and the number is incrementing here as you can see here the display and moving back and forth this piece of paper so the part is detecting and it's ignoring the rest the other parts are not being detected see only the arrow symbols are counted the other ones are ignored 
So that is what uh, vision detection is supposed to do. It should narrow down to the specific part type that you want or the feature that you want to detect. Okay, having that set up, I can close this. It's already saved that into the Cognis checker. So I can just disconnect the programming cable from it. Just put it aside. And I'm going to open up the uh, RS Logix 500 project that I've created for this. Okay, so this is it. And I'm going to show this to you. Okay, so I got it. I got this uh, set up in three parts. First part is the main program, which I'm doing right now. Um, showing up on the screen right now. Uh, the initial part here, I'm just using the uh, first scan bit to set some bits <coughs> off, latch them, latch them off, or reset those. Reset counters here. I'm resetting some counters. Unlatching whatever was latched from the last uh, startup of the PLC. And then that's all, that's only the startup. Pretty much what you would do with other. Uh, devices like an Arduino, you do the first setup, you establish initial conditions, and then you just start creating your structure. Here I am uh, setting up with the first pass or the first uh, scan of PLC that I want the act the the stepper motor to be home, and then I uh, fill some memory locations, some uh, integer file locations with zeros and then I issue a, if I want to do it in manual mode, I can move the axis in manual mode uh, that is pre-established. Uh, some one-shot uh, bits and then I am sensing which direction I want to turn, if I want to turn backward or forward depending if I'm greater or less than uh, the value commanded. I will set, set if I want to move fat forward or backward. Then I will just uh, either go home, select which rate I'm going to be moving at, slow rate or uh, high rate. And then I will jump into a subroutine called stepper. Um, then I will uh, initiate the scanning process and it will then set this bit and jump to a subroutine called scan. So in the stepper motor uh, subroutine all I do is depending on what feed rate I have I will select uh, one pulse rate or the other. So I will move slowly <coughs> when homing and once I, I find home position I can transverse uh, using a uh, much higher feed rate. Uh, that is defined here. Um, then I will define which direction to set the bit. The bit is one for um, moving backward and zero for moving forward. And of course the pulse rate using counters to count how many pulses in which position you want to go to. And that is taken care of by this subroutine. And then the scan subroutine, I'm setting it home, then I'll wait for two, two seconds, and it'll start moving to the maximum position, which is 350 uh, pulses. And then I will see if I detect a part that's a signal from the camera to the PLC. So every time there's a part detection, I will increment a counter. See that there is a counter, and if the part is counted, this is what I'm going to be doing, the indirect addressing. So using the counter value uh, accumulator as a index number, I will go through N7 starting from 1 until maximum 9. Uh, so I can have up to 9 uh, different arrows uh, long the paper strip and <coughs> that should record into those uh, memory locations into those N7 files 
into your files uh, the number at which each of these symbols is located. So I, it, it will vary if I set the paper this here or here, the punt calls will be different. Okay, so that is the PLC logic that is loaded into the PLC already. So that is already loaded into the PLC. So this here is the HMI that I uh, created using Advanced HMI, which is a great product and it's free, open source. And you can uh, compile it in Visual Studio 2013. And this is my current uh, uh, arrangement of the uh, components on the HMI. I have here, I mean, until I fi finish the compiling process, uh, this here is the current position. So it's already uh, connected to the DF1, that's the channel zero on the PLC. It's a uh, RS-232 using DF1 protocol, and that is integrated into the HMI, advanced HMI uh, solution. So this here is where the axis is current at, that's the current position. And these are, well right now I just have six here. Uh, I can add more, nine here. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> <coughs> those will be um, the, the, the count number at which each of the found symbols are at. This here is a button to uh, go home. That is a go home and this here is a uh, this here it's a uh, at home where the when the axis is at the home switch. Right there is a home switch. Then this will go on. So I'm gonna send it home and do a scanning. So right now you can see that the last run, the PLC was 123, and the first one, this one, was found at 123 uh, pulses from home, and the second one was found at 265 pulses from zero. So I can do a homing. Let me just minimize this so it looks, you know, place it at the center of the screen over here. So you guys can see it. So I'm gonna home it. So I'm gonna home it. So there, it's gonna move slowly to home, and it will then start the scanning. It found none. So that is uh, probably due to the axis is not. I think it's not detecting right. Let me just see that. There. Yeah, probably. It was too close. Okay. So, here we go again. So, at home, as you can see, it was it turned green. Yeah. Um, yeah. It comes with a lens, and you need to adjust that. So uh, I think I just misplaced that when I was connected to using the USB cable. Probably moved it out, uh, pull it out this way, so it was not at the right at the right distance between the objective and the lens. Anyway, so right now it found the symbols to be at 90 and 239. You see the distance between these two is about. I don't know, 150, would you say? So I'm going to move this further th this way. See where now, what values the scanner finds. So it goes home slowly, and then it will scan. It found one in 164. And the second one was found on 307. So it does this. It can find it can find more. It can find up to nine and place them in N7. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this was a uh, <coughs> just a, an exercise 
uh, that I challenge myself in doing. So I will, you know, do a physical arrangement, a logical, uh, you know, electrical arrangement, logical arrangement, and finally the uh, visual control of the system. So right now it looks just looks kind of dumb, but the whole process involves uh, programming, troubleshooting, and uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, interface design. This is kind of uh, simple, but it's uh, the startup of something much bigger. It's home. Now it's going to move to 260. Yeah, 250, sorry. And it found them more or less at that point. So I'm going to move it further this way. And I'm going to do another S scan. Go home. <clears throat> there.